All right, guys, welcome back. This is episode nine of the Speed Up and Get Your Hits podcast for a very rare in-person edition. <laughs> As always, I'm Billy Barton with Spec Train. I have Brennan with Vortex Edge. And for the first time ever, I have Chris me. Of Vortex Edge, formerly of Spectrain. <laughs> Some of you guys that uh, have been following Spectrain or trained with us before will obviously recognize Chris and Brennan as well. All three of us have uh, been about that Spectrain life at one mm-hmm. point or another. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Chris was with Spectrain from the very, very, very beginning. And he and I worked together on building Spectrain up to what it is now for, for yeah. quite a few years. And then, of course, Vortex Edge um, just decided to poach all of my best talent. Um, and bring him, bring him up no here. No face trade. <laughs> so, <laughs> Shout out to trade. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. Uh, so, but no. So that is actually where we are right now. We are up here at Vortex Edge, um, guys. Real, real quick. What, what is Vortex Edge? Like, where are we right now? Well, well, physically, we're, we're located inside our armory. Um, but uh, <laughs> so we're kind of a, a separate building from the headquarters building, which is just across the parking lot from up top. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically all we have, we, we house a 150, 25, uh, a test, uh, all indoor ranges. And uh, we're, we're here to serve both external customers and training and, and internal customers and in areas of like product testing, development, and everything else in between. Yeah, and that's and, what we're here for. And, and even more than that, you guys do a lot of education, I would right. say. Lots of education. Putting on class during the week is a big thing that you guys do 100%. here, right? Yeah. And you have yep. probably the most extensive base of curriculum that I've seen anywhere. Yeah. What, like, so, like what, is, what are some of the pipelines and classes so, you guys so put on here? So we offer like 18 different classes, Yeah. right? Which is kind of crazy. There's six full-time instructors. Um, we have intro classes for long-range uh, carbine and then pistol right and then we have a pipeline uh, which is essentially three days so pistol one two and three mm-hmm. uh, same thing for carbine and long range and then we have what, specialty six courses. specialty courses mm-hmm. so with more coming. Uh, home defense concealed carry dynamics hunter marksmanship um, intro night to vision USPSA. carbine intro to uspsa and hunter's marksmanship i said that one i'm missing something <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's literally can't even all, remember all the That's things yeah all of them. Yep. all the things yeah very 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 cool so uh, and obviously Similar to the model that New Spectrum was built on, you guys have a bunch of different instructors that really have specialties and, and are really, really skilled in different areas. Right. And so you're able to put on super high level training in a bunch of different areas, which is which is really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, we I, I am up here this week, guys. We just got done with putting on kind of a, a similar, uh, slightly altered version of our kind of two day level up competition class for all the guys up here. Had a great time. Thank you guys so much for having me up yeah, here. We had an absolute time. blast. And uh, I'm sure we'll talk about that class a little bit more later. But this is why, unfortunately, for once, Nick uh, Bellock's training group is not here with us this week. He didn't, unfortunately, want to, you know, uh, fly all the way up here just for the, the podcast episode. Sh- shout out uh, to the homie. <laughs> shout out to Nick, <laughs> You have man. to meet my cousin in real life. Yes. It's disappointing. Yes, yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah. it really is. But, uh, but anyway, he'll be back. He'll be back. But, yeah, so I wanted to, guys, take advantage <clears throat> of being up here with the fellas. Um this week and and have Chris on for an episode specifically. Chris had a super interesting uh, journey over the over the past few few years. Um, Brennan and I literally met in person for the first time at a match. Yep. So um, you know, Brennan and I have been about the sort of competition performance shooting life now for for quite a while. Um, Chris, you kind of introduce your background real quick. I mean, so first of all, you grew up in like the heart of New York City with like no exposure to guns from an early age until the Marine Corps, basically, right? My, my exposure to the guns <laughs> was, was either observing the... uh, gun battles going on from my apartment, <laughs> right, or like like, the, like know, stray bullets, like the uh, right the, the, re- the actual handling and the mechanics of a gun, right? The, uh, the receiving end of a drive-by variety, right, yes, right, yeah, yeah. Um, yep. So I'm I'm uh, originally from the Bronx in New York. Um, grew up, uh, I mean, 80s, 90s, early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Um, I enlisted in the Marine Corps in 2003 out of the Bronx. Uh, I went direct infantry contract. In fact, I, I, I tell this story. Um, after 9-11, I had to wait for my cousin to graduate from um, boot camp because he and I kind of wanted to go together. Yeah. Uh, but I, we both went into the recruiter's office and we, we were looking to fight. Uh, there was nothing he could have offered us um, in terms of like alternate MOS's like we, we, we had our heart set on, on being infantry yeah um, <clears throat> so uh, that's what I did for four years um, I tried out and made it onto the scout sniper platoon for my battalion mm-hmm. um, 
and yeah, three deployments um, to Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, when I got off active duty in 07, I, I had applied to NYPD and CMPD, which is Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department. I got the offer to go to NYPD, but um, after living in the South for, <laughs> for you know, essentially four years, like I, I wasn't about to move back up to New York. Right. <laughs> um, so uh, I took the CMPD position, started the academy in June of that, of that year. Uh, graduated uh, later, later in the fall, kind of close to um, uh, winter. And then uh, spent seven years with the department. Um, I w I, then I tried out for the SWAT team there. Um, I spent f five on the team total. And, and I tried out and eventually, well, I was, I, I tried out for the sniper section and I did that for the remaining four years I was on the team. Um, yeah, lots of deployments, lots of, lots of training, uh, train and, and I was teamed and, and trained with some really, really good dudes, mm -hmm. high, high level, highly trained guys. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and shout out to Charles SWAT team, man. I miss you guys sometimes. All the raids. All the raids. So many raids. <laughs> so, so many raids. <clears throat> Yeah. So I feel like I feel like you feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. Like so, so I would say a good way, obviously through the your Marine career and, and a career and then a career in law enforcement, um, definitely like you said a lot of good experience behind the gun, doing a lot of cool stuff. However, also probably on the receiving end of some fairly like classic traditional, if not like lowest common denominator like style training and like you know mindset on some of the gun yeah. stuff, right? But then yeah. by the time yeah. I met you, you were pretty well on the performance shooting path if you will yeah. and uh, about being faster and more accurate and all yeah. that kind of stuff how did how did that kind of transition happen for you so that that hunger um kind of started to build when um like i, I would have perform students show up to classes who, right. who were gamers yeah and i'm like i want to shoot that way you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? and um yeah man just accuracy uh being being on the team like especially in the sniper section like you had to qualify with yeah. hundreds right. like you there was like non-negotiable if you didn't qual qualify right. with hundreds you mm -hmm. were you were asked to leave your sniper guns in <laughs> in the armory and, and and you know go on about your business right. um so it put a lot of emphasis on on the accuracy side particularly like with with like your everyday guns like your mm. missiles and your carbines and of course like the bolt guns yeah it, it was super important to be accurate with those but mm. like never really pushed things in terms of speed so i feel like um it, on the tail end of my of my law enforcement career, and I and I contracted in there for a year. I went to Whips in in Moyet, North Carolina. Um, uh, the standards that were put on us like weren't didn't lend themselves to being under a lot of time pressure. Mm -hmm. If 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 that makes sense, yeah, hundred percent. But if if you if if you go out into the street, you're under time pressure mm -hmm. <laughs> because like a match, a gunfight is a race against someone else, an opponent, if you will, in in a, in a in a competition of speed and accuracy right and and um so that that's what kind of like really started to to um push my hunger to go faster mm -hmm. and not just go faster but um bring some of that accuracy along I, yes. I i never felt like you had to sacrifice one for the other um and so i set out on a journey are you saying you wanted to speed up and get your yes hands? yeah oh yeah <laughs> luckily the, 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 on that podcast <laughs> There's a banner in here somewhere. How about uh, that? Yeah. So, um, yeah, man. I, I just, I just feel like um, where a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of guys with like my kind of resumes or whatever mm -hmm. um, would would uh, would put the two at conflict. Yeah. And I just, I just never looked at it that way. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super, super cool, right? So, I mean, <laughs> I think you know we traditionally see all of the you know quals and. All that kind of stuff, right? They they encourage guys to shoot at what you know I've heard referred to as like impossible to miss speed, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Which there is a time and a place for that. Like shot accountability is a thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Um, <laughs> at the same time, we watch a lot of videos, like you were saying, of like when it happens for real. We I think we see very clearly like guys shooting faster than they ever have before for the first time, right. like when it matters the most, right? right? right. And that's where we just see 100%. like mag dumps happening yep. and, and all of that, you know, shot of kind of yep. that we had in the qual exactly. kind of disappears, right? Yep. So I think uh, what, what guys are starting to realize now is like, hey, we should probably figure out what it feels like to mm -hmm. actually introduce speed 
before we get to where, yeah. where we have yeah. to have speed for 100%. real, right? Yeah, I think uh, I think my entire law enforcement law enforcement career, I shot the NC um, law enforcement qualification. I think I shot one ninety six five the entire time. Right. So systematically, I felt like I got really good at using all of the time allotted. Right. And 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 still finding accuracy relative to the speed I was allowed to have. Right. Right. So I feel like I played down to the, and, and, and I'm not saying like played down to the competition of like a fellow officer, but I played down to the clock, to the clock a lot. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I feel like that's, that's what a lot of people do. And, 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 and you get stuck in this, in this system and you never really, um, like that's a really easy plateau to fall into. Mm-hmm. And, and I, and I was there, I was there, man. Even when we, we first met, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, they kind of set it up that way though, right? So yeah, it's, like, it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. These are the rules. If you play there by the rules, you do well. Yeah. Right. And and it makes sense, yeah, unfortunately, right? The, yeah. the 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 purpose of the qual is not to <laughs> help our officers get better. It is for liability. Yeah. It's just hundred percent check in the box. Hundred percent. Yeah. And so therefore, it's set up to encourage folks to shoot that impossible to miss. Yeah. Right. Speed, yeah. Right. And therefore, when they when they do it differently, <clears throat> for real, it's like, oh, well, you didn't do what you were trying to do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, let's not let's not get too far off track here, right? So interestingly, though, right? So again, when I when I first came across Chris, obviously super accurate shooter and well on the the path to getting getting faster, and you were pushing part times and dry fire and doing all of the all of the gamer stuff, if you will. Um, however, I tried to get Chris to shoot a match for a long time, right? So I guess, Chris, I would love to hear from you. Like, so what would you say to maybe if, if you want to talk to any of the reasons like that that didn't appeal to you to begin with um, or reasons you didn't or kind of maybe didn't want to get involved in that? Yeah. Or what would you say for folks that maybe be in your shoes three years ago, <laughs> right? Considering like, hey, do I really want to dive full into this yeah. gamer life? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think for one... Um, the idea of losing isn't very appealing. <laughs> so, uh, if I if I'm being just brutally bare bones honest, man, yeah. I think I think that is the, the fear is because I mean, for one, I was on the team, yeah. Right? So I was expected to be a, a really high level, you know, the operator guy. or whatever. I was yeah. I was the guy. Like right. no, no one else is coming. Like we're the dudes, right? So the idea of having to compete at something that I could potentially lose and make myself look bad or make my yeah. my team look bad, my guys. Our company, yeah. right at the time, um, was not that appealing to me. Right, um, I didn't want to go somewhere and get waxed and be like, yeah, I'm the guy teaching people. How to, yeah, pay me more money to, to teach you how to do this. Mm-hmm. Stuff. Um, so yeah, that's just me being brutally honest. Sure, just, that wasn't super appealing to me. So sure. um, that being said, um, when I shot my first match, it was I was I remember my wife was out of town. Um, it had snowed. All of the inches. <laughs> uh, it was my first real Wisconsin like blizzard. Like yeah, blizzard, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was pretty hardcore, man. Like I've seen snow in New York, but it's it's uh, this stuff up here is um, is biblical, man. It's pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um. So I, I had uh, I had gotten up because I can hear the snow hitting the roof. It was that intrusive. Like it was bad. <laughs> right. And uh, I get up, uh, crank the snowblower up. I had I had just bought the thing. I'm, I'm figuring out how to turn it on. Uh, get the uh, the driveway blown, and I'm like, all right, well it's seven. Um, there is a match today. I don't have a family in the house. Uh, I'm gonna go try this thing out. I, if nothing more, my intent was just to come watch. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. I had never even allowed myself to be around a match. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I remember coming through the doors and everyone's eyes like lit up. Like I remember one of my four, former coworkers, um, Adrian. He just looked at me. He was like, "Bro." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, "Not what you think, man." Yeah, yeah. I, I, dude, I wore blue jeans. Like, I yeah. was not ready to shoot a match. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or to, to my definition of, of shooting a match. Uh, no, no disrespect to anybody who shoots blue jean uh, matches. Yeah, I, was say, I, feel, I feel attacked all of a sudden. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. A little bit. That's yeah. part of my like actual shooting yeah. jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just, I, I was not like, right. I was not 100 percent like sold that I would, I would shoot that match. Right. Um. Uh. But like I had like when I got hired here, like I I mean it was very evident that um, everything here is performance based. Yeah. Like spread. I mean like recording stuff on spreadsheets, drills, um, hit factor like, scoring. Hit factor scoring. Was, yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so I start. I, I mean that like this is 
I, I, I point to this thing because this is the belt that I, I participated in the first um, Forms Pistol Dynamics class. So this, right. this is the same belt. That is right? that is the rig, yes. So I went from not running that anymore, um, unless like the context met sure, like, the training. Sure, of course, right. right. Um, so, but I built, I remember my first competition belt was just a CR Speed black thing that I just yep. attached a QLS holster to, so illegal, uh -huh. right from Carry Optics. <laughs> Um, but uh, I, I, that, that's Trust me, I remember all the DMs. Yeah. I was getting all the DMs. Like, hey, so, bro, is this legal? What's how, legal? How do you, how What's do carry I, optics? How do I get a QLS fork yeah. on my USPSA belt? Oh, like, man. Yeah. All the questions. I remember yeah, yeah. That, yeah. But uh, th that's the setup that I had kind of set up for that level of training yeah. when, when it came up. So um, that's all I had. Uh, the guys were, even the match director, uh, Kellen, who, who puts on really, really awesome matches here. Um, he was like, go get your stuff, shoot the match. And I remember, I remember just finally just breaking down saying, all right, screw it. I'll do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, so um, awesome. I that's the way it is the sport. Yeah, man. Yeah. The meme has been going around the last couple of days is like, it's like when somebody shows up to spectate a USPSA match and it's the clip of Lauren Fishburne going, can someone please get this man a gun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's really good. It's perfect. So yeah, you know, um, and I shot it the way that you would imagine yeah. someone all with all my, the office, all sure. of the all office. office, all the office. I think out of I, all I, the time. I, now, all no, no, not so much all the time. Like I still felt like a like a sense of urgency to right. shoot. Yes. Yeah. But not enough. Mm -hmm. And plus the confidence wasn't there. Right. I just had had not trained that fast. Right. right. Yeah, right. And, and that's that's not that's not a, an indictment of the sport. Right. Um, or of anyone in particular. I just had not put that kind of level of, of, of work in, despite mm -hmm. the fact that I took your class. And and I knew and I knew what it took to be uh, competitive, right? On some level, mm -hmm. right? So um, uh, I shot the match. I think I think I ended up with like 124 alphas and four charlies. <laughs> right. Jeez. So and then and then of course Love like it. the match was the, the match was supposed to have like 60 people, but the blizzard like knocked out like 20 or 30 or so people. Right. I finished 10th. Right. So I wasn't. I, I was like, okay, this is. This isn't as bad. I'm 10th. I lost, technically. I think I, I finished pretty high in carry optics, which was surprising. That was probably um, ended up good for you, very good for you overall. Right, 100%. Wanting maybe me to come back. Yeah, and, the, and, the, and I think the most endearing thing about that experience was that, like, I know the other competitors, like, had not seen or done what I what I'd been through. Right. Right? Yep. But they were some of the most humble, like, um, approachable, help helping people that I had ever been around, mm -hmm. right? Like, bro, like you know, um, this is a stage plan. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you might want to do this, or oh, hey, yeah, you know, now go load up. Oh, grab some pasters. Like, come on down. Yeah, and it really felt. So cool. it, it, it was really. It, it really. Um, I, I would say it's it's something endemic to shooting a match. You know what I mean? Um, Are you telling me that other competitors that were there didn't like roast me? Sneak a video of your worst stage run and then post it like, no. "Hey, internet, look at Gunny no, uniform no, being not, not awesome." All. Right? Is that that didn't happen? No. Okay. No. Now I, I do that now. Sometimes. <laughs> yes, he does that quite often actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, you, know, you know when he he's the best at doing that right. at make ready. Yeah. Yeah. At make ready, he will roast me roast a little you. bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's fine. I need it. I need yeah. It. It's fine. It's great. It's perfect. Um, no, but man, it, stress inoculation. Yeah, it was it was a really rad experience, and it really fight. Yeah, and it, and it and it really put me on a path to self discovery and training with other um, like minded instructors. You know, pushing performance. Um, that was really cool, and, and I've seen. I mean, if, if I say the first sixteen years of of my like gun uh, journey or, or, or career, where I kind of experienced like success and and relative. Um, level of of, of of being good so to speak right or, yeah. or confidence mm -hmm. um what has happened to me in the last two or so years like since your class i would say has been like a skyrocket 90 degree up up kick in in performance for sure um what's crazy to me is that like the your level of performance <clears throat> in kind of your past life right in the marines on the swat team that level of performance was was excellent Mm -hmm. for what it was for the system yeah right. for what it was right, right? right which was i mean let's just say it like gunfights and things mm -hmm. like that right yep. not shooting stages yep. right um and it's crazy to see that someone 
operating at such a high level in that kind of career mm -hmm. can even make that much yep. performance gain. And I know I've talked to you before about like, dude, what would it look like if you went back oh my to the job? Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. Right? And, um, and I know you've said like, oh, it wouldn't even, it wouldn't even be fair. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, like I was like, we would, we would hold like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily call them matches, but like, like competitions, like team wide competitions, yeah, right. like a sniper competition. Sure. Mm -hmm. And that would have its set of rules and we'd have a team wide competition. Like I managed to win a couple years, those things. Yeah. Um, but man, if I went back, dude, I'm sorry guys, but like, it, it wouldn't be fair. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's, I would say I'll, I'll, I'll have you expand more on, on maybe things, yeah. to how, how the, the experience has pushed you to these new, mm -hmm. new heights. But I think one of the things that I, I hear from feedback guys all the time, right, is like being in your situation, right, you're the guy on the team that is like dry firing mm -hmm. and like yeah. practicing and yeah. like cares about being good, right? Mm -hmm. Chances are if you're that guy, you're probably one of the best shooters you know. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Yep. You know, you're, you're, it's very popular. You're just, just from that level of effort, you're probably the best shooter on your team, mm -hmm. right? And so when you are the guy, when you're that guy, that everyone else on your team is like, oh, man, Chris is, Chris is the guy, right? It's, you, you start thinking, man, like, I, I am the guy. Yeah, yeah. And not only am I the guy, like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm about as dang good as I can get. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And when you think that, you are right, yep. right? You are, that, that kills your potential mm -hmm. for improvement. Yep. Um, and then all of a sudden, like you said, you know, a gamer shows up in your class and or whatever, and you're like, <laughs> what, what is this? You're like, what is yeah. this? I, one of my one of the favorite pictures that I have, it pops up as my desktop every so often, right? Is was my first spec train class. It's that, right? <laughs> <laughs> my first, so my first class of spec train. I was just I like, I moved down to Charlotte. I'm like scoping out the area, and uh, I'm like, let me. Oh, there's just these spec train guys. Let me show up and see what they're about, you know. And one of the first drills we did in that class was the old Travis Haley, like, one through five drill. Mm -hmm. And uh, it definitely wasn't further than, than, than five yards. I don't want to say it was, like, three, but it, it might have been, like, four. You know, it was... <laughs> hey, it we was, walked it out, man. It was, it was a good it's five. Pre pretty close and personal, right? And the targets were stacked up, and I was like... <laughs> This is what we're doing today, boys? Like, okay. <laughs> this is my game right here. This is my game. Y'all about to see some splits up in yeah, here. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, and we uh, did. there's a picture Most that... <laughs> there's a picture that Matt took. And I'm, I'm shooting the one through five. And you can just, like, see down the line. And I'm at the far right end of it. And, like, two steps in front of the line is Chris just going... Like, <laughs> like what, is, <laughs> what is happening down there, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and it's like sometimes that moment is is just unlocks potential for mm, guys. It's yeah. like okay, mm. wow, like you know, this, I just got my and my tail handed to me by this you know eighty year old dude at this local match and his revolver. Like, what am yeah. I doing with my life? Yeah, right? Yeah. You know, it's like okay, I need to actually push myself. Right? I need yep. to push myself so hard that I allow myself to miss on occasion to right. learn how to do things yeah, better. Right? right? Like. And that, that's huge, right? Yeah. Obviously, that's a big thing, I think, for, for guys. What else do you think about the experience of getting more into like, the USSA stuff and the performance stuff? What, what have you kind of like learned from that? Or what's been, how has that pushed you to those high levels of performance? Yeah, to back up just a little bit, like yeah. I remember, I remember when, I, when, I, when I ventured, for, for, like Spectrain started, um, it was a, a former partner, partner of mine, Dan Malay, mm -hmm. who's a very successful author now, so shout out to Dan. Oh, very cool. Um, when he, when he kind of left everything, uh, just in my hands. Yeah, like, I was like, "Wow, I am not prepared for this." Mm -hmm. um, both like on, on the, from on the admin side, but also in like the performance and instructional side. You yeah. Know what I mean? So I was like, "Dude, I got I got to train with dudes." You know what yeah. I, mean? I, I just I have to. Um, so I started seeking guys um, who were who had better resumes than I. So all I looked for resumes, right? Um, I, I I got in like Drew Estel, mm -hmm. um, Johnny Primo. Yep. Um, who I, I just I just wanted to train with with other dudes you know I'm not gonna say like I'm, I'm like those guys I was like those those guys at all but um, like like my individuals I yeah would say. sure um, and it was shocking to see guys, dudes with similar life experience that are good shooters exactly yeah who were using timers who mm -hmm. were forcing you to shoot fast right yeah and and I was like whoa like it, like suddenly like this whole world of possibilities opened up to me it's like I can so I can be both fast and accurate yeah mm -hmm. cool you know what I mean. Hmm. Um, so then I, I trained with those two guys, and then that's uh, on the tail end. Like that was that winter, 
and then into the, the spring or whatever was, is when I think, or I think maybe later summer yeah, late is summer. when you came along. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember watching you at the, at, at the end, I was like, A, I got to go talk to that guy. <laughs> and then like, B, I need to be, I need to be better. Like, mm-hmm. I just need to push myself more. And um, it was kind of <laughs> shocking when you came up to me and you're like, hey, uh, you know, if, uh, if you like, if you guys like, would like some help around here, like, <laughs> But you said it in no, a way yeah. that was like, hey, you know, I just I just finished slaughtering this this course, and you know, if if you want to learn some stuff, like that. <laughs> no, I did, I did not say it like that at all. No, I know, I know, I know. I'm just I'm kidding, guys. He, he, he literally just offered to to help. Like he wanted just pace target. Like it's like, no, you're crazy, man. You're gonna help me really take this thing to the next level. Um, and so I started seeking gamers. Yeah. So you know, along came um, Brennan when he came along, and you know. Trey's I was like, Trey, yep. Yep, yep. I was like 25% gamer at the yep. time. <laughs> yeah. Still doing some appendix was, things <laughs> at matches. Still which, still doing some like, Fireland ALS bucket holster things. <laughs> right, right. But, yeah, um, still, still shooting the match with the blue alpha belt. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. so like, yeah, I, I, I went through this, I went this progression of, of like seeing like really high tier one level dudes. Yep. Um, like, oh, it's okay to shoot this way. And then mm-hmm. along came the gamers, and I was like, wow, they have it figured out. Yeah. So I really started to gravitate towards that stuff, man, and, and really tried to like see how can I inject performance mm. into just shooting and just figuring out uh, how, how to just be better at the at just the raw skill of shooting, of applying mm. a bullet to a point as fast as I can. You know what I mean? I, I think that's been kind of the coolest, one of the coolest things about I mean, I have known you forever, but <laughs> mm-hmm. we've also spent a lot of time together the last yeah. year and a half mm-hmm. or, or year or so, right? And I think the cool thing is, right? So the the your background, what your background provides that mine is different is that you have applied shooting in so many different contexts mm-hmm. that I've never have yeah. and might never ever, right? I hope you don't. Man. The other thing, is, the other thing is though, it's what's cool is that. So my perspective has just been from like pretty much from the beginning of like, oh, how can I do everything fast and accurate, mm-hmm, right? Right. I think that's I, I immediately discovered that as like, okay, yeah, I, I definitely see the value of that, and that's what I want to do, mm-hmm. right? And so seeing you like pick up on some of that stuff, where all of a sudden you you're, you're picking up on something or something clicks for you that it was like, oh yeah, like I just figured out how to do this thing. Mm-hmm by itself apart from the context that i have previously you know been in and like just that isolation and going dude (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. i can reload my gun in under a second yeah right right right. and like just i think that's been really cool and and then being able to apply it back like oh okay yeah how how important is a a fast reload sometimes very important sometimes maybe not right but just putting that kind of in its specific categories So yeah, cool. To kind of, to kind of like, uh, to speak to the context part. Right. right. Yeah. Where I was before, I started to really dive into the performance side. So like, mm. you know, if you if you just like ball my resume up, sure, and like put it into like practice score, <laughs> I, I I was like I was like a decent like maybe like just under a B class shooter, which is it's probably fair. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Uh. And that's, and that's really surprising, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because like, um, not to knock on, you know, I was I I was in B class for a bit of I think three, two or three matches later, I I, I picked up my my card. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. But uh, man, that's surprising because a, a lot of guys walk out, walk around, you know, thinking that the system they they're operating in and and and, and learning and, and 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 kind of progressing through, um should have them at a certain level but then you know you, you put hit factor support into something and it's like oh man maybe maybe i'm not there yeah you know i mean and so that's that's the most that's been the most powerful thing for me mm. to realize that you know not to not, not that i ever thought that i i've never had that thought like you've got to figure it out sure but i just i didn't know what i didn't know yeah you know what no, I mean? absolutely and so, hit factor scoring will bring you down to earth if you think you're hot humility, humility. <laughs> yeah 100 yeah. yeah. percent. yeah so, 100%. yeah. Very cool, man. Well, I'll just I'll say this, right? So, I mean, I remember, like you said, two and a half years ago now, the, the first Spec Train two-day performance pistol class, I was like, Chris, you've got to come to this thing. Mm-hmm. And, he, and I think your perspective at the time was like, man, I just don't know if I'm even ready to, like, mm-hmm. take this class. And I was like, no, you are coming to this thing, right? And it was so cool to see you in that environment, how quick you picked that up. Because, again, you had 
the mastery of the fundamentals mm -hmm. there. And that is just that is just so well primed to pick up on the things from that class. And uh, but man, to see coming back and kind of doing a lot of that same stuff now, two and a half years mm -hmm. later, to see it is like an entirely different yeah. shooter. To be completely honest, it's been really really cool yeah. to see. Yeah. It's a complete change, uh, you know, in mindset. And I said to Brandon at some point in the class, I'm like, when did when did Chris become a hoser? Like when did <laughs> like when did this happen? You know, like yeah. Yeah. and it's just it's yeah. is really really cool, man. So it's been been a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, being up here the last couple of days yeah. and being with you guys. So. Really cool. So I hope, I hope folks listening take take your experiences you know to heart. If you're that guy that's on the fence that is is scared of the yeah. the first match experience or, or diving into it, man, I think it's yeah. No matter where you come from, it, it is it is really really helpful. Yeah. yeah. The last thing I'll say to that man is um, just don't be afraid to lose. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. Like you, you are going to. You're going to. Dude. Yeah. It's, <laughs> For the record, you're going to, you're and it's but it's to okay. Get, you're going to get waxed, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. Right. It's fine. What the the, the, most, the the biggest value I took from my first match is that it's there. Like your yeah. splits are there. Your right. draw times. Your every possible metric of performance is mm -hmm. laid out in front of you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's and, and, and if if you don't hunger for that, then are you really trying to improve? Or are you are you just doing a thing to do to do it? Yeah. Or, or or to exist on Instagram. Mm -hmm. or whatever whatever your motivations are. Mine yeah. mine were to improve. Mine right. mine were uh, to make myself harder to kill, as, yeah. as, as, as dopey as that sounds. But, um, no, totally fair. And also, um, I feel like the difference between shooting a match and the stress that you feel when you're on, when you get to make ready command, yep. and the stress that you feel like when you're in a gunfight is, is, is not, the same, not the same, but man, it's comparable. Hmm. You know what I mean? And I would also say, that. Especially at, at the very beginning, as, you know, it's, it's a lot worse. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 especially when classifiers when I'm trying to do good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I would say, man, the, the other main difference is that maybe, um, maybe shooting a stage doesn't have a tactical decision-making pro process piece like mm. a gunfight does. Sure. To gain you like a, a decisive advantage to end of it. Mm. Maybe, but, but what, what, what the stage lacks um, versus like a gunfight, like you gain so much more in that. Like again, like you have a, a you can have speed charts and you got yeah. all sorts of, of, of valid data that you can then take and, and program into a dry fire plan. And I mean, that's all I've done. I mean, I, I have obsessively dry fired for the last um, year and a half, and it's and it's paid off. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm lucky enough to work here, and I and I just say, guys, like don't don't be afraid to lose. Um, don't, if, if you don't have, just grab whatever gear you have. The guys in your squad will, I can't speak to what squad you'll be on, but I, I can tell you that they will square you away. There'll be extra stuff. They'll, they'll take care of you, man. Like, and, and with the recent, with some of the recent rule changes too, pretty so much is, everything yes. is legal. Yeah. yeah. So like, if you carry appendix, like whatever, man, just, just come do that yep. and you're probably, you know. Yeah. I'm interested to yeah. expand on something you, you kind of mentioned, yeah. right? Because what's super interesting what you guys do here is you go shoot a match and then you go in the shoot house right after, right? And you mm -hmm. kind of take some of the things and go back and forth. So what mm -hmm. you just kind of mentioned is like the, the problem solving aspect mm -hmm. of a gunfight, yeah. right? And, and obviously stage planning is an extremely different exercise yeah. from a gunfight. However, I do feel like, I'm, I'm interested to hear you confirm this, uh, that one can definitely inform the other. Obviously, you can't do problem solving fast, dynamically, on the fly until you can do it slow first. Right. And the cool thing about stage planning, like, so, I mean, obviously, guys, when I first started shooting matches, right, it's <clears> like, <throat> you, you know, you go in and you have that four or five minute, like, walkthrough period, and it's like, man, after the end of that five minutes, you're like, I don't even know where the targets are yet, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's like, you're yeah, just, yeah. you still feel super, super lost. I'm Let, still like that. Still, right. Just, and then eventually, the you know... 40 matches later or whatever it is, you walk up to a stage and you're like, oh yeah, I just need to do that, mm -hmm. right? And it, it, it's so much easier and you start being able to problem solve like much quicker and easier, right? right? So I feel like the more times you go through that exercise at a high level and really looking for, you know, perfection in, in the problem solving <clears> exercise, <throat> the more likely you are to be able to do it dynamically on the fly it would, to that level, Aggressive right? Without you have to compare it. So, and I've heard it from Brendan a little bit, I'm interested to hear from you, Chris, as well, like, uh, are, are there things you've kind of borrowed from USPSA that you apply in the shoot house now? Or what, is, what does that kind of look like for you guys? So obviously it's really hard uh, <laughs> as, a, as a SWAT dude to reverse engineer a stage plan as in, in relation to hitting house. Right. <laughs> um, but I mean, 
if we're being honest with ourselves, like as as a sniper, like my role was to like gather as much information about the target as I could, mm. figure out how, what the layout of the room of the house was, to some extent. Right. And then it's just an application of what we did in our shoot house to that, yeah, that context, right? Right. So I think that's what's really cool about USPSA because like you apply, you have to apply that same process, but you get to be in the target or on target before like things, the bullets start to fly, you know what I mean? Um, so a lot of the things that I've been able to like, like, like directly take from USPSA and, and like stage planning and all that, um, a lot of the footwork, mm. like hmm. massive, like, I mean, just direct transfer, like copy paste into the shoot house. Wow. You know what I mean? Um, uh, connection to the target. I'm sh- with, with some modification, I'm sure. Right. Yeah, to some extent. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. right. Like, probably don't want to blast around like a corner like you would. Yeah. Just be, like, right. But, but context, right? Like, right. Like, this isn't. But this, the mechanics. Are, yeah, the mechanics are, are, yeah. Are, 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 I mean, like, like I said, copy and paste. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just your, the context for, for, apply for a, a problem. Right, right, exactly. And, and, and I don't think. I don't think that like throwing out like a blanket statement like oh that will kill- get you killed. Well, <laughs> sure, maybe in a very small specific context, but when you when you just apply when you're applying principles to problems in, in like inside the shoot house, then right. then it, it's you, you start to wrap your head around like the, the possibilities there. Sure. So something like on the footwork, right? So um, <clears throat> I mean, I've I've never had to do like CQB or anything like that professionally, but I've been picking it up from uh, Chris and some of the other guys that work here. Yeah. And it was interesting for me as strictly a performance sh- shooter, right? Going into the shoot house and, tr- and trying to pick up some of this stuff. It was like, oh, yeah, the sh- shooting on the move footwork technique is exactly the same, mm-hmm. <laughs> now, <laughs> right? Like, or uh, the most efficient way to get myself from outside a room inside. to inside a room mm-hmm. with one step. Mm. I'm probably gonna have my feet set up like this. I'm yeah. probably gonna just. <laughs> lift my <laughs> leading leg and step into the room and I gain a lot of ground that way right. instead of doing some weird crossovers, something like that, right? Yes. And, so and like, that's, yeah. that's what and, I'm talking and about. And yeah. just, probably don't want to drop step. <laughs> right. <laughs> don't want to drop step in the fatal funnel, right? That will impact your hit factor right. and or your face. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> now, <laughs> now, if, now it, 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 so a, a lot of times like we, we, we look at USPSA and see what, what can't be applied to like the real world, right? Mm. But if we like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take down a stage like I would a house. Sure, your hit factor would be so bad. Right, <laughs> you know what I mean. So like, there's, there's. But if you that, can do it fast, you can do it slow. Uh, uh, yeah, 100%. And, mm-hmm. that, and, that, and that's what I'm getting at, man. Like, if you can figure out how to how to shoot accurately, shoot fast. If you can apply shooting fast and accurately uh, to a stage, mm. to a field course, to, to classifiers, then you take that skills like a B class, A class level skill set yeah and then go into the shoot house yeah and so i'm not saying like you're gonna go in the shoot house and do everything that fast or of course but the accuracy resu- uh, requirement is going to be there mm-hmm. yep. but now i have more bandwidth yep right mm-hmm. to where i can maybe give something back to the target in terms of a target identification yeah mm. i can solve a movement problem i can yeah. pick a better path i can any number of things like the the benefits to just the, the 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 physical mechanics it takes to to run a stage is and the direct application to like gunfighting or the yeah. shoot house is i mean it's it's immeasurable immeasurable you know what i mean and that's why like a, a lot of times like i see brennan and like he's one of the best dudes in the shoot house well obviously because i mean he's got the footwork and all he's doing is applying it uh, applying it to the shoot house context and it's 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 allowed you, I think, to, to pick that stuff up a lot faster. Right? Much quicker than, yeah. than normal, I would yeah. say. Yeah. And I've gotten similar, you know, I've gotten some interesting feedback from guys I've mm-hmm. talked to. You know, one, it's an, an interesting trend now with some of the, you know, elite tier one units is like they, they have their guys go train with a gamer mm-hmm. before selection, yep. right? And it's mm-hmm. like, how, how applicable is that to selection? Well, the feedback I get from guys after they go to selection and crush it is like, mm-hmm. well, we didn't really have to think about the shooting part. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. were just able to focus all of our energy and, and bandwidth, like you said, to all the other things. Right. Now, right. Without freaking out, like, am I going to, you know, miss this target? Or, 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 or where's my foot go? Or Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And we've even, we, we've even seen that with, we've run a, a couple CQB courses and, you know, I'm kind of watching from the sidelines, assisting as much as I can. And I, I'm observing things like, okay, yeah, this person definitely needs to be a lot better. If this person was a, a lot better at shooting. 
and moving and <laughs> moving then shooting, shooting on the move, that mm. type of thing. He would get so much more out of this course yeah. right now if some of that was just on autopilot. Right. right. Where he was so comfortable with dynamic movement yep. with a gun. Right. I was, I was trying to stack all the skills at yeah. once. And that's what yeah. I was going to say. Because yeah. they're still trying to, how to or, figure out how to shoulder a rifle. Mm, or something. Right. Or, 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 or I would even say like consciously control a lot of the process of getting around out of the, the, yeah. the barrel. And yeah. onto a place that you mm -hmm. want. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, if it, and, and that's what USPSA does, man. And that's what dry firing does. And that's what just training and, and improving does yeah. in general. Right. It makes a lot of those processes that, yes, you can control consciously. Right. Like if, if my if I if I started a stage and I was like, all right, on this stage I'm gonna really focus on on trigger. Yeah. You're gonna get a lot of this, but you're not gonna get a lot of time, right? Mm -hmm. um, or you're you're gonna add too much time. Right. Uh, so jump uh, 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 packaging a lot of uh, what in dry fire are conscious skills mm -hmm. to improve uh, in, uh, uh, performance in those areas. Yep. And then now I can bunch a bunch of those things and make them subconscious yeah. is super powerful. Cause now I can just worry about seeing the dot on the target and then everything else is just happening. Yeah. You know what I mean? So essentially what you're saying is subconscious mm -hmm. skill is not just something we need to have for stages. It's also something you <laughs> might want uh, in a gunfight. Yeah, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, so I would say like if you're exchanging a fight with someone, isn't the time to figure out, oh, is my grip okay? You have to check, so check that box. And then, you know, oh, I have to prep, uh, let me, let me apply a uh, uh, confirmation too. Yep, that, that's good now. And now shoot. Like that's Inter not the time. Interesting. Not Interesting. the time. Not the time to figure that out. Yeah. Can't confirm. <laughs> cool, guys. So, yeah. super cool story. Hopefully that was super value for, valuable yeah. for some of the folks. Go compete. Um, Go compete. That, uh, that was And take his class. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Cool. So, uh, Chris, Chris is the one new to this. Generally, after we, we kind of just talk about something like mm -hmm. that for quite a while, we have a, a This Week in Shooting segment, um, which is kind of where the guys in the podcast just kind of maybe take something that was interesting from the last week, what we're working on, um, what we're trying to improve on, where our focus is, what kind of drills we're shooting, lots mm -hmm. of different stuff. Uh, for me, I had a, had a super interesting experience shooting at the South Carolina section. Um this past Saturday in a significantly diminished condition. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, had a, had some real uh, back and neck issues um, that were, and actually ended up shooting the match on muscle relaxers. No one oh. report me or anything. <laughs> uh, probably not supposed Can't to do that. Can't use video. Can't use probably video. Probably not supposed That's to do cool. that. Um, but yeah, no, it was super interesting. So I think, you know, I fell apart. I had some real moments of brilliance in there, but also fell apart in, in a handful of areas. And I think that it was essentially trying to do what I can normally do in a condition that I couldn't always do that. Right. Um, super, super interesting. So I think the you know, a takeaway for me, probably from, from that match was, um, yeah, I think your focus when you're in, in, in any kind of diminished condition like that, the focus has to shift, a, you know, a little bit mm -hmm. um, towards really, I, I guess, just away from. Hey, man, like I'm gonna try to, you know, burn this thing down, right? Um, I'm gonna try to shoot, you know, 25 yard targets aggressively on the move because I think I can, right? Towards mm -hmm. towards risk management. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, which was which was which was pretty pretty interesting, right? Right. So like e even on transitions and stuff, like I can't I can't rely on the fact that my you know head is going to get there that far ahead of my gun because I can't turn my head, right? Like <laughs> that's what I was feeling. Um, so you have to, you have to just build you have to build that risk management I think a little bit into into what you're what you're planning what you're doing right. on, on the stage, um, which was which was which is pretty interesting. Risk management's tough for me because I, I have the confidence to think that I can do all the things all mm -hmm. the time. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, but man, yeah, sometimes you gotta you gotta take another look at that stuff. Yeah, for sure. Which was which is pretty interesting. Hooked up pretty well on a few stages, had one overall stage win against some, some absolute ballers um, that were there at the match, but um, had some absolute dumpster fires as well mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. uh, put me a little bit lower than I, than I wanted to be for the match. But um, yeah, no, super good, good experience. I think I got some, learned some interesting things for sure. Um, and I think that uh, I will probably be taking the opportunity when I have like maybe flare ups in the future 
and I'm like feeling really bad to like go shoot <laughs> in that <laughs> condition <laughs> instead of sitting on the couch and trying to get better. You train, know what I mean? Train how you fight. Is yeah, yeah, train like you fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> so uh, interesting stuff there. But I don't know. What you guys been up to this week? Anything interesting? Well, Monday we had that um, pistol one. That yeah. was actually a unique experience because um, it had a lot of really good shooters in it. Yeah. So it was more Very like a, it was more like a, a team building thing with uh, with another department dealer stuff. Yeah, shout out to those guys, man. Um, but they are ballers, dude. Yeah, they are they are guys who've got Excellent all shooters. all of the experience shooting competition. Man. It was it was wild. So you guys were walking around, giving me a tour up at up at the up at the main shop yeah. there earlier, and you're like, "Oh, yeah, let me introduce you to this GM over here." And they're like, "Let me introduce you to this GM over here." And I'm like, "Why am I here? You yeah. have all these guys yeah. here that are yeah. ballers, right? It's pretty cool." Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, y'all, y'all got some shooters up here. It's yeah, pretty so, cool. So these, those guys came down, uh, took pistol one, um, just to kind of see what we what we do. Yeah, um, I was actually really happy. You know, we we uh, we treat the we treat the last the final drill of that. Um, of that course as a match yeah right so whether you know it or not like if you come to our pistol one you were in a match mm. <laughs> so um and it was really cool to see where i placed man um I, I won the practice round of the final drill nice and then uh and then i was feeling really great about myself mm. <laughs> i was second to last and i was like yes first place you know what i mean i was gonna take this thing and then, of course uh shout out to tucker tucker <laughs> schmidt he comes up there and just lays down just in who, absolute beautiful. Who's time. who's an open GM for right, what it's worth? Yeah, yeah. Right. All right. So just yeah, and he just he beats me by an entire hit factor point. So that was, mm. that was pretty did you did you win carry optics though? I did. There, you go, there, we, go. <laughs> there we go. That's all that yeah. matters. So no, um, dude, that was a really cool experience um, because and, you know this happens at every class. I'd say like you just learn so much from interacting with people, mm-hmm. yeah. um, whether it's in terms of like how you articulate something to a specific yeah. person. How to be a better instructor, right? Yeah. Or just yeah, how to just or, like p- portray information maybe yeah. differently or, or better. Um, so that was that was a really cool experience. So again, shout out to, to the dealer sales team. Um, and then of course we had you in the house, which is really cool. Um, a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a uh, it's crazy, man. Like I'm not gonna say like I shouldn't have taking that class when I did <laughs> way back when. Yeah. But I was in a better place to take a, a lot more out of it. 100%. Because now, now I'm, I'm in refinement mode. I'm mm-hmm. not in like figure it out mode. You know yeah. I mean? So It was really cool because like the whole day we would do something. Uh, Billy would, you know, talk through something and we'd, mm-hmm. he'd run us through a drill to practice mm-hmm. that thing. Yeah. And uh, Chris would go or whatever and then he'd, and he'd come back to the back of the line. I'm standing back there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, zero judgment, of course. Yeah. No, and, no, of course uh, not. No. But then, we like debrief everything. Yeah. You're like, dude. Like, yeah, you're you're connecting on that, like fine or something. Mm-hmm. And it was just it's really cool because obviously Chris and I train together all the yeah, time. For sure. And it's really cool to start seeing like very, very small things start to click into place mm-hmm. that are going to have a much bigger impact yeah. on our, you know, our, our shooting in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's also cool because because we practice and train together a lot we often are giving each other feedback and just being like, okay, yeah, now I can look for that. Yep. Yeah. Whereas maybe yeah. we might have missed something in each other uh-huh. because right. we just didn't yep. know what we didn't know. Yep. Right? But yep. then, like, we get the context and, yep. and the instruction from Billy, and it's like, oh, dude, try this, and then, boom, now yep. it's it, the thing is fixed. Yep. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I'm really excited yeah. to get to work, honestly. I mean, yeah, for sure. like, uh, <clears throat> to be perfectly honest, as soon as Billy leaves, I'm probably going to just be hammering stuff out. For sure. Um, and yeah. some some new focus to, yeah. to what we've been doing. Um, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure the first time around, you know, obviously, <laughs> like like any class, and this is the way you, when we design spectrum classes, and I can tell the way you guys do here as well. It's like it, it's a waste of students' time if we try to master any skill set oh, over right. the course of a mm-hmm. day. Yeah, mm-hmm. like that is a waste of time. Like you yeah. know, one of the guys was here. He's like, man, I wish I could, wish I could just take in like. Like four hours from you on grip, and then I could go and work for six months, and I could take four hours from you yeah. on yeah, 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 trigger yeah. control, and I'm like, well, that would, yeah, that's that's we can't do that. That'd right? be expensive. Um, and so obviously we tried to pack as much in, and the, I think the goal for the way the best instructors run classes is like, hey, I want you to know how to do the thing, yep, understand the technique, and understand how to work it, understand right. how to practice it, how to right. build it, and then we're gonna do enough reps to where I can audit any you know, obvious, obvious deficiencies, mm-hmm. right? And, and kind of improve those things. Um, and then obviously I'm just going to see a demonstration of the fact that you actually understand 
what the purpose of doing the thing is right. and you know how to do it and how to work it. And then we're cool. Okay, now you, you know enough to go build that skill on your own. Let me give you more value, right? But the first thing we teach that class, if it's or take a class like that, if it's all new stuff, it's like drinking from a fire hose. Oh yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. And so yeah, it was, it was it was really really cool seeing the the second rep, you know, from, from you guys, I think as well in the class and being able to, you know, do do rep rep that stuff out that you've been now working on for two years, and mm -hmm. it's not like hey, I'm trying to just learn how to do the thing. It's like yeah. man, I'm trying to learn how to perfect the thing. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah, yeah. that's a really really cool mm -hmm. cool moment for sure. Yeah, a lot of it was a lot of fun. Um, for me, I guess, so we already kind of touched on the class. So I actually shot, um, the Northern Illinois sectional oh, yeah. match, <laughs> uh, which is actually done in <laughs> Wisconsin, right. oddly enough. Um, so I shot that a couple, couple weeks ago. Um, really terrible match for me. <laughs> uh, I placed probably the worst I ever have. Yeah. Um, had some real dumpster fires, so many mics. Um, but what was interesting for me, what I took away from that, um, I was a little bit bummed, but more I was kind of motivated to be more intentional with the different modes of training. We've talked about that on the podcast before. Yeah. Um, Billy's, Billy often references like JJ's different modes of training, right? Um, so I have been putting in this, this huge focus on, in, in speed mode. Yeah. And it's been really cool because A, it's, it, it, it's been 100% building my confidence in how I approach like attack targets or confirmation one targets, right? Um, my splits have improved dramatically. Yeah, I'm dramatically. 100% saving time on some of those targets. Billy's noticed that, right? Yep. Uh, to where I'm just, I'm just much more confident in splitting the gun. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> I don't recommend uh, doing a bunch of speed mode training and never switching back to over match to match mode or execution yeah, uh, leading up to a major match like that. 100% mm -hmm. not a good idea, um, at least for me. So I went to that match and I was really confident about a lot of things and things were not working out just because I was not shooting to a consistent high level, right? I was shooting to a extremely high level in practice some of the time, right? right? And so that was just a good reminder for me. And, and I, I think I walked back into work on Monday after that and told Chris, I was like, first of all, I'm never shooting USPSA again, which is... <laughs> That's wrong because you told me that and night I was like, after you shot the match. Second of all, <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, leading up to major match. Like we, I, I got Wisconsin sectional coming up here in July. I said leading up to a major match, I'm going to take at least two weeks and only practice things in execution mode. I'm going to set things up um, like a months. medium or, 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 or even a field course yeah. on our range. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to plan it. I'm going to shoot it one time. And I'm going to tear it down. Yeah. Right for like two or three weeks before, and I'm not gonna do any exploration, speed mode stuff, because it's just, that's not what I, that's, I, I can't have that in my head going into a match. Yep. So honestly, I think it was a win in, yeah. in for, for, my, for my own training and personal yep. development, <clears throat> because I know that now, and I saw firsthand how that appeared, how that kind of manifests itself in a match, and to be perfectly honest, the match was really, really easy. It was probably one of the easiest majors I've ever seen. Mm. Um, there was nothing difficult. There was one drop turner. Everything else was static targets. Like it was, it should have been kind of playing right to my strengths. Right. Um, so I mean, that was cool. It was a learning point for me. Super important. Yeah, su super important. And and I, I go far as you know, far as say this, depending on how you're doing your training, right? So it's it's really challenging for folks to i think to <laughs> when you when you get on the skill development train and you're seeing growth and you're seeing improvement it's it's really hard to abandon that mm -hmm. and, and and so you're like man that's all i want to do all the time is i just want to push 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 and, yeah. and and keep moving that window of skill and getting better and better and better and yes we should be doing that but um you know <laughs> i would say obviously <coughs> Major matches, great reason to to really focus hardcore on execution. But like, all of us want to be ready for execution also on a daily basis as we go out into the streets, right? 100%, yep, yep. And so I think I think some execution mode in every training session is is also yep. really yeah, yeah, yeah. Idea, right. Um, you have to be able to turn that switch on and off and have an idea of okay, <clears throat> this is where my current execution skill level lies, and I. This is what I have to hold myself to, right? Yep. The idea of, of disciplining yourself to those formulas of success for each, you know, kind of level of shot difficulty. So, 
Yeah, super, super, super important for, for folks to, to remember and keep in mind, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think it's stuff. easy to forget that too, yeah. like in like the Instagram shooting world culture, Yeah. right? Because, I mean, I mean to be perfectly honest, like if I do a bill drill in 185, like I'm probably not going to post that to the grant. Yeah. Right? But like the other day I did a, I set a PR for myself. I did one in a 1.5. Yep. Right? I did not get a video of it. I wish I had. And if I had, I would a hundred percent have posted it to the gram. Right. right? Um, but if, if that's all you kind of see in your feed or whatever, uh, you start to think that that's just kind of, that's just kind of it. And everybody's just always pushing speed mode all the time and you're hooking up sometimes. And when you hook up, it's really cool. Mm-hmm. But what's more impressive to me now and probably to, to, to all of us is, is seeing like consistent execution over a long amount of, of shooting. Yeah. Like, like uh, the, the people who win majors, the yeah. people who win nationals, area matches, things like that, they, they shoot very, very well um, all the way through. Yeah. Right. We've talked about that before. Right. But Yeah, no, I think it, well, it's super important to understand. Like, this, the, the, there is absolutely value, and this is kind of like what we were talking about to begin with as far as, like, the different modes of performance training. There's value in finding those new one out of 10 possibilities yeah. in speed mode because what it does is it makes your like super easy, consistent all the time stuff even that much better, right? 100%. If, if I can yank the gun out mechanically from my draw to my apex in 0.5, am I going to be doing 0.5 draws on a stage? No. No way. But guess what I can do? If I can get the gun out in 0.5, now I can take two tenths and be shooting sub 0.8 alphas every single time, mm-hmm. no problem. And that's pretty cool. No. Or, worst case scenario, you rip the gun out, you don't have a good grip, you fix your grip, you confirm your sights, and you're still shooting in a second. Yeah. Like, <laughs> why not? Right? So, so uh, yeah, exploring yeah. those possibilities is huge. You know, on the build drill stuff, it's like, man, it's like, a, yeah, sure, best build drill I've ever shot was, I think, a 139, right? All, all alphas, right? But it's like, can I do that all the time? Absolutely not. I've done exactly one time. Right, but that guess what that means? It means that when I shoot, you know, literally the worst billy drill standards run I've ever shot in front of the class up here, that my seven yard billy drill I think was a one sixty something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So because you've pushed into the one thirty nine, now your really crappy run is a one sixty. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. so that's yeah. that's what it's all really about. Cool. Right. That's that's yeah. what it's all about. Cool stuff. Really really cool stuff. All right. Um, last thing, we, we've gotten pretty far in here at this point, I think. So let's let's dive into the questions answered uh, segment this week. I think Brennan has gotten one that's pretty interesting. I know we all get pretty mm-hmm. interesting, but he got it literally yeah. again just this morning <laughs> yeah. before we're recording this podcast, yeah. and uh, we got a pretty good crew uh, here, I think, to maybe discuss the question a little bit. So what we got, bro? bro? Yeah. So on, I think I think it was actually on Tuesday, which is the day Billy showed up. I got this question, and I think we were talking about it Tuesday evening. Yep. And then I literally, yeah, I got it again this morning. Um, <clears throat> people asking how how do I get started in firearms training, mm-hmm. become a firearms instructor? A lot of people use the phrasing get into the firearms industry, which mm-hmm. is really easy. You just apply to any company <laughs> in the industry and now you're in the industry. Uh, but a yeah, lot, to, lot of people kind be, of- To like kind of, mop the floors at Vortex Optics. <laughs> it's like, okay, cool, you're, you're in the industry, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but a lot of people are kind of thinking uh, maybe a little bit more high, high speed, yeah, of uh, course. teaching, of course. Um, shooting for a company, something like that. Yeah. Um, I'm really young, right? Um, I'm very fortunate, very blessed to, to have the job that I do um, for the company that I do. Um, however, that's a question I get a lot because I think people kind of maybe, maybe see see my page, see, see what's going on and be like, oh, like he did it. Um, how did you do that? I want to do the exact same thing. Right. <laughs> so I, th- I thought that'd be a, a pretty good pretty good question to pose. Yeah. Uh, so let's, since you brought it up, let's start with kind of general, right? So yeah. industry. Right. Right. So if you want to get into the industry, first of all, you need to have a skill in something yeah, that you can do in the industry. Yep. Most yep. industry jobs have nothing to do with shooting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. HR, Abs- absolutely nothing to do with shooting. <laughs> Sales people. Right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> at, 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 at Vortex Optics, right? You guys have uh, here on this premises what five hundred plus? About four hundred ish. Okay, so yep. four hundred plus employees. There's probably less than twenty guys that shooting is a part of their job description mm-hmm. at the, out yeah. of the company, mm-hmm. right? Like, like that's kind of how the percentages work. So just keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. Not that, not that you know, doing HR at Vortex Optics isn't cooler than doing it at Walmart, right? Like that. To be fair, right? This is a really cool place yeah, yeah. to work in general. Yeah. Uh, but but have a skill and have an idea of, of what you want to do and bring to the table. Don't be like 
how do I get a job at Vortex? It's yep. like, no, <laughs> I, you, you need to have a goal. I want to do this for a cool company, mm -hmm. right? And then, yeah. and then that's kind of how you should approach that. But the instructor thing, right? So what do you guys, what do you guys think? Um, before, I, before I just run off on the whole rabbit trail. <laughs> I, would say, I would say three things. Yeah. Um, I would say you, specific, speaking to the instructor side, yeah. just the instructor side, like A, you have to be good at people. Mm. You know what I mean? What I mean by that is like, you have to be able to talk and you have to be able to have conversations with people. Meet people's needs, demands. Uh, like a, you have to have a good customer service base. I think that's gone yeah. very far for us, and it yeah. certainly helped me get this job. Yeah. Um, two, uh, you you have to be teachable yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you are not actively seeking training that doesn't include watching reels on Instagram, then <laughs> I've got nothing for you, man. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you have to be in others' classes, and not just like you know Joe Schmo with with a big name and following. Like I, I mean, like people who can put out actionable data on how, what their performance is. You know what I mean? Like, let's expand on that a little bit. So yeah. like, why is that important? Right? Let's, say, let's say I'm a guy who's a really good shooter. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm an M or GM in USPSA, but I've never taken a class. Mm -hmm. Why is it important for me, for that guy, to be out taking a bunch of classes? Well, maybe not that guy. Because you know he's he's starting to hook up on some things, but okay. but uh, what I feel like even that guy can take away from taking a class mm -hmm. is maybe learning how to put out and portray information. Or not how even, to not coach. even just that, right? So I think that was uh, uh, that for me, right? What is super super important as an instructor is not just saying, "Hey, I have figured out a way mm -hmm. that works for me." Right. I need to, I need to know a. What are, what are the various thoughts in, in the industry about how to do a thing so mm -hmm. that I know what are these students coming in to my class with pre preconceived ideas yep. so that I can shoot down objections before they even come up, right? And then I also need to have an understanding of the fact, like one of the things I always say in my class, like I've taken some unique opportunities to train with some of the best shooters and instructors in the world. And what I've come to believe is that if I get the top 10 shooters in the world in a room together and ask them to grab a pistol, the only thing they're going to agree on is that the 11th guy doesn't know what he's talking about, yeah. right? And that's a little bit of exaggeration. Yeah. There's some universal principles, but they are all going to tell you something a little bit differently. Right. So the question right. is why? Why is it that that one guy's grip works for him and another guy's grip works even you know better for him and so on and so forth? Does it have to do with the way they're built, what gun they're shooting, what caliber they're shooting? Like all the, There's all these variables to consider. Yes. And I have to know these things, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. Not just, hey, I know a way that works for me. Therefore, I am going to just you know <laughs> rinse and repeat, yep. you know this yep. just rubber stamp my way of doing things on every other person. You can't do that, right? It's not going to work, right? So a, I think a, definitely yep. a wider area of education mm -hmm. and self education there is absolutely yep. critical, yep. right? Right. And then I I, I would also say <clears throat> oh, I forgot my third one, but uh oh, um, I would just say like you have to want to be better. Mm. And you can't be afraid to n not be good. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially because yeah. if you're a good instructor, that's worth anything. You're gonna demo things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so if you're not <clears throat> driving and practicing and taking training and training yourself seriously, like your your match mode is just not gonna be there when it, yeah. when it matters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that people, especially in, in, in the in an industry that's so um, social media heavy. Like they need to see something live being done the way that you're talking about it being done. Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean, um, so that's super. That's super. Always been super important to me, um, and it's something that I think lives on, especially now, and certainly lives on here because yeah. we demo all of the things. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, that's my couple take couple on. things. Uh, you know, I definitely add in there. Uh, first of all, I think um, <laughs> I think a lot. Of, so the reason we get this question so often is because it, can can be because there's a lot of folks out there that want to get into firearms instruction instruction a because they really have an unrealistic expectation of what the job is right yes. the job is not shooting a lot like <laughs> like yes you have to try to you have to try to force time in your schedule to maintain your skill set because i think all of us i'll say for me anyway you guys now work on range and you shoot, i don't know how much you're shooting these days but for me i shoot way less than i did before i started teaching mm -hmm. as much as i am right now mm -hmm. right and the shooting that i do do is not like training a right. lot of it right, right. i mean right. I, I realistically th this particular class is a super heavy round count class for me i probably shot three four hundred rounds over the last couple of days but it was all execution mode you know for the most part you know uh, trying to 
you know, deliverables. It was not mm-hmm. training. It was not trying to get better. And right, so it's right, not right, helping right. me get better. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it is, it is, it is, if that's, if that's why you want to get into it, that is not the thing. Yeah. Um, the other, the other thing is because guys want to be the guy, right? <laughs> they want to yeah. be, you know, famous and respected and all that kind of stuff. It's like, man, that's, that's not a good reason yeah. to be getting, yeah. getting into it. This is about serving the people that come to your class. It's about being humble. It is about, um, it's about helping other people get better. It's not yeah. about it's not about them looking up to you for being better, right? Hundred yeah. percent. Um, and then, <clears throat> the, you know, obviously most of the job is like, you know, being a firearms instructor is like, you know, stapling up targets <laughs> and you know, <laughs> grilling fix, hot dogs, fixing people's guns and grilling hot dogs and organizing mm-hmm. gear and, mm-hmm. and 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 HR and finance mm-hmm. and scheduling and. Yeah. You know, dealing, Downing. dealing, dealing with vendors and you yep. know ranges and all of that stuff, yep. and it's really yep. not anything fun <laughs> for the most no, part, right? No, no, yeah. um, and so the question is, if if that the moment where you're actually doing the job, helping somebody, and you say, "Hey, man, uh, think about doing this," and then all of a sudden the light bulb goes off, and they're a better shooter than they were five minutes ago. If that makes it worth it for you, then great. This yeah. is a great thing yeah. for yeah. you to yeah. be doing, right? Yeah. Um,